On today's episode, we are breaking down the tippy-tippy top of the wide receiver position. Make sure you stay for all the debates. And at the top, a little bonus talk about the Packers wide receivers. Subscribe to this channel. Don't miss a moment. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Hey, to get down low. Hey, <laughs> it's the Fantasy Footballers. Ba-ba-ba-boo. Thursday, April 11th. That's right, we're back. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. The Deucers are here as well. Did you just hiccup, Jason? Yeah, a bit, I heard a sound. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for calling that out. Sorry yes, about I, that. Yes, yeah, I, did. I mean, it didn't have to be called out. You no. did it right into the microphone. But people would have wondered. They would have gone. <laughs> They would. They would didn't know. What it might they have heard. gotten edited out if I didn't call it out. People might have been searching their speakers, saying, "I got a problem." Yeah, they would have thought that there's an issue with the wiring. Yeah, yeah. But- ah, my car speaker does that sometimes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that was his intro to the show. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. We'll, we'll move on. Um, well, we just did a early wide receiver rankings episode. We counted it down from twenty to eleven. So today we will do the early top ten wide receiver rankings. And uh, we'll we'll talk about a very interesting quick question. It should be a good show. should be fun. There's a, a couple of players in particular on the top 10 countdown that I think will be hotly contested today and throughout the offseason. And you're going to have to plant your flag on what you believe about these players because the cost to acquire them will be pricey. It will be expensive. It will be a, it will be something where if you're wrong, it is a significant impact to the foundation of your team, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. You get you get the top picks wrong and you're gonna have to scrap and claw your way back. I don't think a lot of the early Cooper Cup drafters last year had a great time. You know, like when you miss it, like you said. No, we did not. Oh man. Yeah. Same with Garrett Wilson last year. When Aaron Rodgers played uh what like four seconds of a game yeah it didn't work (laughs) you you saw all of your plans crumbling if we have extra time we'll jump into the mailbag as well a couple reminders at the top of the episode there is a new dynasty podcast episode out it was yesterday's uh show and it is a mock draft mayhem episode with jason moore matthew betts kyle borgannoni how much mayhem actually happened yeah um, quite a bit of mayhem. And, and you know, what was really fun. It was a great show. I highly recommend if you, if you haven't given it a listen yet, if you're wanting to learn about uh, these, these upcoming rookies, it, it was a very, very good show. I honestly thought that Kyle's idea of how we were going to do the mayhem. Right. And this is just like being honest. Mm-hmm. I thought it was so stupid. Yeah. I thought it was like, this is not, you gonna, told me that I you did. said this is going to suck. I go, this is not going to go well. And then it, not only did it go well. What a great idea. Like it was actually <laughs> it was actually super oh. useful from like a fantasy perspective and how you would shift based on what happens in the draft. So it's it was a great episode. Check it out. Uh yeah, rookie mock draft mayhem uh for from a dynasty perspective. Uh we also want to remind you about the ultimate draft kit, don't we, Mike? Certainly do. It's That's available. not a secret. What the ultimate the, draft? No, kit? the ultimate draft. Kit. No, no, it's not a secret. The cats out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ultimatedraftkit.com, lowest possible price right now, and the Dynasty Pass will be getting its third. the 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 big bada boom update will be out shortly after the NFL draft. All right, uh, quick question of the day from YouTube. Thomas writes in says, "Well, I guess it's a question." He wants it sounds us, like a demand. It's kind of a demand. Rank the Packers wide receivers for dynasty. Yeah, rank them. What's okay, the gap from one re- to another? That's not a request. No, that, that's, that's not that's a, a demand. But he, he is right, saying so, it demonstratively, and I feel like I should obey. So rank the Packers, Jason. Rank them. I, I, I think the real question primarily is at the top. Who's the one? Who's the two? 
because I I would I would imagine that all three of us have Christian Watson and uh, Jaden <laughs> Reed. Reed. Yeah, and Jaden Reed what was that what was that face you were doing? My face was saying that there is still I still think the window is cracked open for there to be another number one. Like I I do think that there's the possibility that like Dobbs, like Dobbs could oh, okay. still. I mean, that's what makes them so hard. That's why he is demanding this is because you have talent throughout the roster with Jaden Reed Watson. We've seen the big plays and the touchdowns with Romeo Dobbs, reliable. And then even Dontavian Wicks, who uh, I think from a skill set standpoint really stood out last year. Yes, he did. And so, you know, it's hard because Jaden Reed is a little less prototypical. Um, he is great with the ball in his hand. They give him into rounds. They give him short area targets. He seems to be a go-to receiver at times. And then other times um, he can fade away from a game plan because of just the nature of his physicality and the type of player that he is. And it, it makes it more complicated. I mean, he's, he's 5'11", 187. He's, a, he's an explosive player, but he can disappear, but yet ended the year with four straight top performances. Yeah, Jaden Reed's a good football player, a good wide receiver. The question for fantasy purposes is can he be the one for this team? He clearly was at the end of the season when they needed him, and he came through big time. Those four games, Andy, he was on pace over those four games. If you extrapolate that over 17, just to give you an idea of how good he was, it would have been over 100 receptions, just under 1,200 yards, and 13 touchdowns. He was a, a monster at the end of the season. However, he's, he's he was scored, also dealing with a chest and a toe injury. Say so he scored a touchdown on 13% of his touches. And that's great, but that the, the, nice, the nice thing about those numbers well, is the great. yards and the receptions were there too. So it wasn't just like, well, all of his production came from touchdowns. No, I'm not saying it all comes from touchdowns, but I'm saying every seven and a half touches for Jane Reed, he scored a touchdown. That's not... It's certainly not... I would, I would bet against it. Yeah, well, especially that pace, for a 187-pound uh, player, but that pace was... 13 touchdowns. Yeah, and, and not only that, Oh, those games were the games at the end of the year that Christian Watson was not in. So when Christian Watson played over 70% of the snaps through the middle of the season, weeks 5 through 13, how did Jaden Reed do in those games when he wasn't necessarily the focal point of the offensive game plan? Well, he would have had a 17-game pace of 59 receptions for 658 yards and six touchdowns. So I do believe that when the entire wide receiver core is healthy and together, Christian Watson is still the primary focus. He's still the better athlete. Now, this is, I mean, it's debatable. This is just my view. Oh, we will debate. This is my view, um, and, and it's really just an educated opinion because there's no way to know, you know, it's hard to knows. It's hard to extrapolate a rookie season when a player's emerging. It's hard to trust Christian Watson, who is perennially injured. Um so both of those things complicate matters. I think Dobbs probably doesn't have the ceiling, which would put him at three for me. But I lean – to answer the question or uh, the demand, I would go Reed, Watson, Dobbs, Wicks. That's Reed, that, Watson, Dobbs, Wicks. That's how I have it as well. Attorneys at law. <laughs> but the, the, the fact that you're debating this and we're all kind of saying, well, I have it this way. This is why uh, – like I have Romeo Dobbs – as an interesting trade for target in dynasty because he cheapest he is yeah he's like and, and Dontavian Wicks is probably in that category too it's just if you want a cheap entry point into the Green Bay Packers wide receiver crew which you should because it looks like Jordan Love is the real deal it looks like the Green Bay Packers got it they they, they nailed it again and you're going to have a stable quarterback and a you know a, a good high-powered offense here you want pieces of it. Jaden Reed, trying to trade for Jaden Reed right now in Dynasty is going to be extremely difficult. And there is still a chance that he just – that was kind of the, the most efficient and the best that you'll ever see Jaden Reed. He'll be a good player, but maybe he never really comes through for, for Dynasty. So if, if, I'm, if I'm going after a Green Bay Packer, it's probably Dobbs or Dontavian Wicks just because they're cheaper. And I, I, I really don't know – who is going to emerge? I I think that Christian Watson is from a, is the most talented, the highest ceiling. Should he be able to become a more refined wide receiver, and if he can ever have a healthy hamstring? Yeah, I mean that's the issue. I I I think even as an unrefined receiver, 
he can get it done if he can just get on the field and stay there. He dealt with his hamstring issues, and and to be to be fair, that is an issue. I know we don't try to qualify guys as injury prone, but this is a human. No, being this guy is a problem. That from basically pee wee, you know, football all the way. He's dealt with injuries his entire career. That being said. Is he at the top of your He's list? He's at the top of my list. It goes Christian Watson, Jaden Reed, just for ceiling. Dobbs, Wicks. Be because of ceiling, and I'm not going to just predict injury. Any of these guys could get injured next year. If they're all on the field, I believe Christian Watson is the best one. To me, he's the trade-for target. Because Watson? Christian Watson. I, okay. I think people are done with him. Uh, there are plenty of people out there, at least, that are done with him. And it might just be the people who have had him that are the most sick of him, like, yeah, I'll take I'll take anything for this. He spot. has been extremely touchdown dependent in the games that he was valuable for your fantasy team. That has been, and it's I'm, also true. And it can be good and it can be bad. And and obviously he's very capable of getting into the end zone and making big plays. So it'll be fascinating to watch. I think we all believe that Green Bay is going to have a lot of fantasy value, stability at the coach quarterback position. It'll be it'll be interesting. And then just the real quick bow here for me on, on talking Dontavian Wicks. If you've been following the show over the offseason, we're talking about rookies with their targets per route run and yards per route run. He's at a, a very healthy point of, you know, he had a, uh, from weeks 12 through 18, over 22% of his routes he was targeted. He had 2.21 yards per route run. That's a, that's a good strong number for the sample size. So he is He's a, a he's a fascinating second year player and and Jordan Love you know I, maybe I, yeah I, maybe the just trade for Jordan Love <laughs> right yeah jo Jordan Love was great do you do you realize where he ranked in passing touchdowns last year and what are your guesses the total touchdowns or total, like total passing touchdowns what was his I rank go. quarterback what I'm gonna wow see I I don't know what the setup is I think the setup right. might be he was good but didn't have that many I'm gonna guess eighth eighth Mike I was seven eight was my Got reaction number two number two yeah Sec Dak Prescott threw more and that was it he threw more than Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes it's so impressive I know it's like stupid Packers you're yeah. not allowed to keep getting away with it and and, and Deucer's Alley's got a smirky oh, Al yeah, Borland over there owl. remembering yeah oh, <laughs> he's gosh. cheering he's cheering. who okay just quick just real quick temperature check because hearing that and these wide receivers and everything it's it's so wild Jordan Love at his price or C.J. Stroud at his price, Dynasty? It's got to be Love. Yeah, C.J. Stroud's price is <laughs> – It's not what – it would not – It's your left arm. I want, I, I want, I want both, both, both guys real oh, – I want both guys <laughs> – I want to keep my arms. I apparently want no arms. <laughs> yeah, you want both arms. I'm willing to give up both of mine to get both those players. I think the future – that's the future of the NFL, those well, two players. So Well, it could – Love – that could be wild because if you drafted Jordan Love and you sat and waited patiently like the Green Bay Packers, you may not be able to get him. Yeah, and call call me a hopeless romantic, but I believe in love. Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> Boston. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Uh, yes. <laughs> You're proud of that one? Oh, yeah. <sighs> I, I drink oh, in your groans. <laughs> I, lo I love them. <laughs> Uh, we don't have any big NFL news to share. The NFL draft is a couple weeks away. We announced yesterday the NFL uh, draft special, fantasy footballers draft special we're doing on NFL Plus. So we'd love to have you join us on April 25th at the end of round one on draft night, fantasy football reactions in the moment, breaking down the skill position players and their, their impact on uh, so much. I mean, it changes depth charts, not just for – the outlook of the individual players drafted, but for, you know, everybody else on those rosters when you spend high draft capital. Put it in your calendar. Put the put the draft should be in your calendar, first of all. Yeah. You have to let people know that you are not available the night of Thursday, April twenty fifth, and you're not available after the draft. Yeah, you're just not available. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I think we don't have anything else we're doing. Let's jump back into the wideouts. Wide receivers. All right. Top 10. The countdown continues. Little stat for you for top 10 wide receivers over the last decade. An average of 3.7 players repeated as top 10 wide receivers from the previous year. Isn't now, when I, when I read it, I was like, ah, they're going to say an average of 3.7 dropped out. No, 
an average of 3.7 repeated as top 10 wide receivers. Um, the most in the last 10 years to have repeated at all. When things go well, it's five of the 10. So injuries always play a part. You're not going to, you know, generally make it through a full season like the way the top 10 finished. You know, those 10 guys don't generally make it through 17 games healthy. Um, last year's repeat names, it was Tyreek, it was CeeDee Lamb, it was Amon Ra, it was A.J. Brown, and it was Stephon Diggs. Barely. Barely. <laughs> he squeaked in there thanks to the first half. I do think it's kind of interesting when you see those five names that did repeat. I think three of them we're really confident about. Yes. I think there's a fourth that maybe a, maybe some people are really confident about. Diggs is the one that's going to drop out in people's minds. But Tyree, and in true and in reality, prob probably, yeah. But I'm I'm leaving the door open for C.J. Stroud to, you know, top ten. I I'm leaving the door open. I, yeah, it, it's not impossible. Like it it wouldn't shock me. I'm not going to project it. I'm not going to draft him like he is finishing top ten. But may maybe it was a fluke. Maybe the second half was a fluke and was just the scheme. So, uh, but Hill, Lamb, and Amon Ross St. Brown we'll talk about today for sure. And then I, I don't know what the opinions are on A.J. Brown. That'll be discussed at 10. The countdown continues with Debo Samuel. Debo is a man. He is. He is untackleable. That's that's just the truth. I mean, he's, he's a good football player, right? He's a good wide receiver. He's a fine route runner. He's what, whatever. Throw all of it away. He's a man. He's just out there. Uh, uh, just a man, a man, a man, a man. crushing these. Why don't you break down that yards after catch? Yes. Yeah, so um, we, we were talking about this with another, another player, and it was just mind blowing to see the yards after catch per reception leaders over the last five years. So a minimum of 40 targets a year. Over the yards last, after catch. Yards after catch. Now, this is a that this is off of the whole NFL. The entire thing, all the wide receivers in the NFL, each of the last five years. So hundreds of wide receivers over five years. Um five of the top yearly finishes, five of the top eight, are all Debo Samuel. The last five years, <laughs> it goes Debo Samuel was number one in twenty twenty. He was number three in 2021. He was number four in 2022. He was number six in 2023 and number eight in 2019. Not like he ranked eighth. The eighth best of the last five years was him, and he beat himself four times. He's, he's just, you cannot bring that man to the ground easily. You try, and uh, once he's got the ball in, the hand, in, in, in his hands, he's gone. Now can he stay healthy? Yeah, the the wild thing is is this year, at least in our initial unstatted reactions, you're the highest on Debo Samuel. I don't know if that is you thinking about Ayuk's departure. It, do, it does include okay. that, yeah. Because we, we have talked about that in studio. I obviously have always been a big Debo fan. His problem's been staying on the field. I, it was like an eye test thing immediately. Like the second he played an NFL game, there was something that said, I'm better than you about Debo. It was just a matter of putting it together over the course of a season health-wise. And and so we've seen him finish at number two at the position before. Um, Really special player. He had a run last year, a four-week stretch where he finished ninth, second, first, and ninth. So four straight top ten finishes, five touchdowns. But, in, but in that, that was run. only after he, you know, he, he broke his shoulder. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he finished at number two overall in 2021. Then dipped down to 37, missed four, uh, four games. Uh, and so, and he was, if you remember last offseason, he was talking about it. He said that was the, and the, mm -hmm. the team had success. And he said, it was the worst season of my career. I was like, I, I just played terribly. He said he just played bad football. And then he came back last year and finished at 12 at the position and he missed two games. So and the, the potential is there. You also you you can't take away the rushing opportunities for most wide receivers for not for most for all wide receivers outside of Debo Samuel, rushing opportunities are just like a little salt on a steak. You know, it's nice. You're gonna be like, oh, I I prefer it with that little extra dash of salt. For him, this is mashed potatoes on the side of steak. He's, oh, I was gonna go Bernays. So but. oh, that's that's better because it's still a topping. Yeah. Um, but he, I mean, 
his the way he's utilized in the rushing game I just, is I, so valuable for fantasy. I just started thinking Jason might ask for mashed potatoes as his sauce for a steak at a restaurant. I, well, I use it like a Do you want like the Bernays? Do you want the I'll take the mashed potato sauce, please. <laughs> yes. Uh, you Sir, d- mashed potato sauce? It's just mashed potatoes. Just give me mashed potatoes. Just, mashed, just give me mashed potatoes. What would you like for your side? Also, a ma- mashed, uh, mashed potatoes. potatoes. <laughs> just put some on top and then give me a bowl Look, on the side. I don't even want to see the steak. It's just a plate of mashed Let potatoes. Let me search for it. With, and a, there's a buried treasure yes. of meat. Yes. <laughs> Dude, that sounds awesome. <laughs> that that is sounds not like a even nice... a joke. If I got a plate of mashed potatoes and you're telling me there's a filet somewhere in there, <laughs> there's a game show. This is a dream come true. <laughs> All right. I'm I, look. I can do this at home. I know yeah. what I'm cooking next. Yeah. I, am cooking I want a picture. Yeah, a mashed potato mountain. That's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> um, but, but the point I was making. So he has averaged in his career 1.32 fantasy points per rushing attempt. And for context, Christian McCaffrey averages 0.68. So this is over double. Every time he touches the ball, more valuable for fantasy because Shanahan utilizes him in the right way. So these are manufactured touches that guarantee a certain baseline. I am on in on Debo Samuel. His this year. touchdown totals in the wide receiver two year, eight of them on the ground. And we I remember coming into the next season, we said that's just really hard to repeat. Yeah, but he had five last year, and so you know five five is in the cards for Debo every single year on the ground. And so yeah, very. Uh, explosive player he's not he may be drafted as a wide receiver too but he's the kind of player that can put up wide receiver one weeks um over a long stretch and really impact your team all right let's get to the next player wide receiver nine that andy hates go ahead set set you, me up you again. got cut off set there. me up oh, again this is great we had to uh, take a quick break andy was uh high on this player before he had a quarterback and now Andy has just been talking mad junk about Drake London. He's out. He's out on Drake London. He's going to have so, no shares of Drake London. So, is Do you that, ever say sentences and realize how little truth there is in them and then just like wish you didn't say them? No, that, that was just I, like, only the beginning part. I still am happy I You do say sentences. Uh, look, I, I don't even know how you can extrapolate hatred. Um, he's ranked nine for me. You have him at nine. Yes. No, I'm just speaking of the fact that... Range of outcomes is a question. You did bring up, and I do think fairly the other day, that his ADP, Drake London's uh, fiery uh, group of supporters, has maybe swung the pendulum too far into superstardom that we haven't yet seen from Drake London. So we've got him. I've got him at nine. Andy's got him at nine. Mike's got him at ten. We're, we're expecting big things for a wide receiver who has not yet done that but has not had the opportunity to do it, should he be drafted as a top-10 wide receiver for 2024? I think some of the points that I made, Garrett Wilson had bad quarterback play, still put up bigger seasons than Drake London did. Uh, Kirk Cousins hasn't supported a wide receiver one above wide receiver seven all, all but one time. I mean, like Jefferson, yes. Jefferson is very, 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 very special. Uh, but outside of that, it's been, you know, Thielen finished at seven one year, but all the years of Diggs and Thielen and Garcon and those number ones for Kirk Cousins in the past, um, you know, there was a time we used to view Kirk Cousins more in the Derek Carr sphere of like, maybe he's not going to be able to throw enough touchdowns. Maybe he won't have enough consistency over the course of multiple games. I just think that the range of outcomes for Drake London is much wider than almost every other name in the top 10. I think London could finish at nine, where we have him ranked. I don't think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he was 22 because there are tons of weapons. Kyle Pitts is a, a bona fide wide receiver in the offense. They added Darnell Mooney. Bijan is a wide receiver in the offense. So is there a world where Drake London makes less of an impact than people would like him to? Yes, but it all comes down to draft cost. I loved him before he got a quarterback because I expected them to get somebody and him to take a step up from wide receiver 39. That's not an unreasonable take to say, wow, he's going to go, you know, finish much higher than that regardless of the change. But now the cost is very expensive. He's drafted as the wide receiver 10, so you're having to make, you know, you're having to take him well above Debo. You're having to take him above Ayuk. You're having to take him above DJ Moore. 
It just well, I think where you take them is an interesting conversation because usually it's right around Garrett Wilson, and there is a fair debate to be which he's at eight in our rankings. If you want to wrap them together, yeah. So I I have Drake London one spot ahead of Garrett Wilson. Um, we collectively have Garrett Wilson one spot ahead of Drake London. That's the decision you're you're not going to get both those guys in a draft. You're right. going to be staring down a draft spot, and you're going to say whose range of outcomes is better, whose ceiling is better. What do you believe about? The two Achilles quarterbacks coming back off of it's it's, in, it's absurd that we have such a parallel uh, a situation for both of these quarterbacks. Both their quarterbacks are old. Both of them are coming off of an Achilles injury. Now different leg. Kirk Cousins is the plant leg for the Achilles tear. It, like, is that worse? Uh, or, uh, yeah, like, will that end up being worse in in the recovery process? But we know that. Like Drake London, for all of the things that have gone wrong so far, we at least have, like, we've seen true ceiling games from him. Where, you know, you had the week uh, against Washington, 9 for 125, against Tampa Bay, 10 for 172. And right now, I'm trying to like, do, like, a quick scour here of, of Garrett Wilson. And for how great he is, uh, he essentially has, like, one of those types of games in his rookie season, eight for one sixty two against Minnesota. Well, he's been a target machine. Yes, he's got he the has. most targets through two years, basically ever. Um, he has been the centerpiece of the offense, and I do think right now bringing in Mike Williams. That's if you want to say what the what the difference is, because I love both these players. Um, it, I I really debated which one am I going to slot in first, and to me it came down to which quarterback do I think is better right now, which to me I. Kirk, I would take Kirk Cousins over um, this age of Aaron Rodgers, and I think that the competition is worse with Mike Williams coming in for Garrett Wilson and finally having someone else on the field because he's had, like, nobody else throw the ball to. Check down. I look at it as a plus for Mike Williams because he's not a high-volume wide receiver. He didn't hurt Keenan Allen. He's also there. coming so, off of an ACL tear. So, yeah, I look, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be a decision between these two players. Mike and I both have – Wilson presently ahead of London, but not by much. Uh, I've seen more from Wilson. That makes me um, believe in his consistent ability to get open and be a, a, a go-to guys uh, guy. But uh, look, it's going to be fun. Those are both weirdly parallel situations, yeah. like you said. And Garrett Wilson has been – look, he's coming off of his season where he's like, that was not fun. That was the worst season of my life. That was the worst thing to deal with. They didn't have a backup quarterback. So he went out there kind of – doing his best, knowing that his best wasn't going to be good enough for that offense. I think Garrett Wilson has a higher potential to be a top five guy, personally. Okay, so th I think that... Is that a good discussion? I think that's a good tiebreaker of is, who has, in your opinion, the the clearest path to overperforming because you're, you're paying up that you are really, really hoping that this guy at least maintains value and is a wide receiver one, but who can make the jump to being truly a top five at the position and a difference maker more than not. It is diff. I think it's going to be difficult for fantasy players to, to like, what if you can spend a, a one round later selection, you can let Garrett Wilson and Drake London and all the mysteries of Achilles and quarterbacks and age and new companion wide receivers. And you can let it all go. And then in the next round, you can take your shot on Depot. Uh, that, I mean, that, that seems that like a choice or Olave or, or uh, DJ Moore or something like what's the percentage chance that Drake London outperforms Olave? I, I look that's tough yeah it, that's entering it comes a, down to Kirk that's entering a range where I'm willing to take the draft discount spend a, a higher pick on a running back at I, least with those names I don't feel like they're lock solid guarantees I'm now, looking at you know, ADP and next to Garrett Wilson on one side is Brees Hall on the oh other gosh. is Jameer Gibbs you kidding and me next to you know Drake London you're talking about Kyron Williams or Jonathan Taylor so <clears throat> yeah I think grabbing oh, one man. of those those are no of, touch wide receivers right now the, the, for me that range I would rather have those running backs because I do like some of the uh wide receivers that are a round later. That's actually obviously we're still really far away from August when things will solidify. But as of as of right now, well, and there is a chance in the draft that the Jets, who have been working out different wide receivers, they could take a big name. I think you're going to start looking at New or, York a little bit differently if it was 
Does um, Brock Bowers, if Brock Bowers goes in, does that hurt Garrett Wilson? I, I wouldn't be as, I wouldn't be too freaked. No, not as a rookie. Okay. But if it was Odunze, Odunze, yeah, Odunze at number ten overall, I think that could have an I think impact. It could but happen it's, too. But it's to me, if it's not one of the those three guys who I see as a true number one, it it'll just be a. You don't a help, care if, if Troy uh, well, Franklin okay. arrives. Yeah, helpful addition to the offense. At number seven, the unstoppable Puka Nakua, just twenty two years old. His ADP is wide receiver six right now. I feel like it's probably time, if I'm being honest, right? Like we want to be true to our our psychology. I think it's time that I like walk into the throne room, bend the knee, <laughs> and just accept. and offer the crown. There you go. Okay. Because really? I think I don't think it's in my nature to do it when a player's had one season, and yet this season was 105 receptions for almost 1,500 yards and six touchdowns, which means that the only reason I don't want to do it is because Puka Nakua wasn't a first-round draft pick. Right. That's really the truth. If he was drafted like Jamar Chase, if he was, if he was a Correct. top 10 and then he has this Correct. season. Zero dot zero doubts. And the you thing would, I would have no problem bending the knee. Yeah, and, and, and what was nice about his performance – now some of it was without Cooper Cup, so you can you can debate that. You can say, well, now let's say Cup plays a whole season, maybe it's not going to be this good. This could end up being the best season of his career, which I mean, when you've got a season this good, it could right. be any NFL player's best season of their career. Uh, but when you watch the film over and over from week one all the way through the middle of the season to the last game of the year, you're just like. That guy's so good. Nothing's, He's so tough. Nothing's going to change. Uh, does Is Matthew Stafford still the quarterback? Yep. Okay. Uh, did Aaron Donald retire? Yep. Okay. So, like, they were put in positions where they were throwing the football a lot last year. Now you have a lot of work to do with a young defense that doesn't have a linchpin in the middle of it. Nothing's going to change for Puka. He's say he's safe, and I need to just accept it. Uh, well, you're not going to get an argument from me. He's my wide receiver four. I believe that. One in your heart. He is one in my heart, man. I love Puka. He is out, absolutely outstanding. He's talented on every level of the field. He can take a screen. He can get a bomb. But when he's working across the middle, he is tough as nails, and Stafford finds him. He looks for him, and you want pieces of a McVay-Stafford offense. It's been good for fantasy. Whenever Stafford is healthy, there's going to be a ton of fantasy points. And yet, and yet, 3.7 fantasy wide receivers repeat year to year that finish inside the top 10. So, Mike, if Cooper Cup plays every game, what is the percentage chance that Puka Nakua finishes outside the top 12? Be, that he's one of the, what is it, 6.8 that drop out or 6.3 that drop out? If Cooper Cup plays every game, the chance that Puka Nakua is not a wide receiver one in dynasty, or I'm sorry, in, in, redraft. Uh, in redraft, I'd put it. Low, because you're you're telling me that Puka's playing every game basically sure. too. Yeah, really low, really low odds. He he, too reliable, too consistent, too yeah. many targets. Yeah, like this with the if you, the red flag is six touchdowns on a hundred on 160 targets, only getting six <laughs> receiving touchdowns. That's that's a number that you would hope could come up. Maybe it does. May, maybe it doesn't. What was like? Where was Robert Woods? What was his? highest touchdown year when he was playing that role for probably i'm gonna guess eight i'm trying to pull it up real quick we got uh so five six two six i'm four. guessing i'm gonna guess six <laughs> but, but the, my point being of like maybe that role like is he just new new young hotness robert woods in this offense which is great robert woods was always like really strong for fantasy never this good but Maybe the touchdowns just don't roll to there. So it, it, my point in bringing that up is maybe Puka's not someone you're drafting going, I'm getting a top three guy. If everything breaks right, I feel real good about my chances of being having a top three wide receiver. Probably not. But the chance that you're getting a top 12 wide receiver, it's, it seems very, very strong, especially when you're talking about guys like, like Garrett Wilson and, and Drake London of – just seeing how things could go wrong so quickly. Robert Woods is a great name to bring up because you have to remember 
he he had a season where he was a top ten wide receiver yes. for fantasy, and he's Robert Woods is good, but he's not special. I was gonna say that actually that just depresses me. Like relating I'm about them the together. Role. I'm yeah, talking about the role. Okay. Because Puka's but, way better than Robert Woods. You you watch the the speed and the uh, and the toughness. Like Robert Woods didn't have some of these uh, abilities that we you see. Yeah, on I mean film huge plays Puka. down the sideline. Yeah, yeah. Puka, Puka can do it all. I just I, I want to aim higher. I would aim at Cup. Well, and you're and and you're going from Jared Goff to Stafford, so that that does move the needle higher. I mean, we talk about oh Robert Woods had a top ten season. Puka already had. He was the wide receiver four last year. 160 targets as a rookie is bananas. Let's talk about one of the players that repeated as a top 12 wideout. A.J. Brown. Comes in at six on our rankings. I don't know why. Maybe you can explain it to me. He's like a begrudging pick. I know why. <laughs> you know why? Yeah. Because after the bye week last year, he was he finished the season pretty poorly. The last eight games of last season, which is a – that's a big chunk. That's half the season. He would have been on pace for sub-1,000 yards. So you saw it. You saw the end of the year. You saw the Eagles really struggling as an offense. You saw this team that was whatever they were, like 10-0, and 0, just start collapsing, falling apart, early exit out of the playoffs. Nothing was clicking. That that eight-game stretch, Here here are his exact numbers if you extrapolate it over a season. 82 receptions, meh, 958 yards, meh, two touchdowns. Oh. I mean, it's like that. that's – One touchdown scored after the week 10 bye. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was an average of 8.3 fantasy points per game, and that was over the entire second half stretch. So, so that's it, why you feel bad. Is there, will that create some blindness? Will that be make him a value? Do you believe in what Jalen Hurts and the, and the Eagles are going to do this year? He's – Currently Eight. being drafted as the wide receiver seven. That's where I have him. You guys both have him at six. I was going to say ADP does not say that it's making people afraid. Uh, he's still a very highly drafted player, and there are obvious ways it goes wrong. Now, the first half of last season, he was unstoppable. He yeah. set the the record for what was it? How many consecutive games over 125 yards? Yeah, and he was at what six? seven? One, two, three, four, six. Am I missing one? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, you're not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Who's but it, but worth pointing out in that stretch, uh, Tampa Bay, who we were targeting their secondary, the Manders, the Rams, the Jets, the Dolphins, and then the Manders again. I mean, it was, it was a pretty pretty juicy uh, run there of games. But he still I mean, the Jets were literally the hardest. But he just he, that was like, included. I mean he still really came through. I I believe in AJ Brown. AJ Brown is just so pumped that Stephon Diggs what he did what he did at the second half of last year because otherwise he'd be the, the heat the heat would be all on AJ Brown. It's on Hertz, it's on Smith, it's on everybody. Yeah. I mean uh AJ Brown and Puka basically had identical numbers last year. Targets, catches, yards, touchdowns yeah, AJ Brown's did. had double digit touchdowns a couple of times. I have him ranked higher because I do think he is more of a prototypical touchdown guy. And to me, you know, Cooper Cup still represents a threat to Puka in the touchdown numbers. So I have him a little bit higher. But look, we're at the category of players where we're not needing to tell you. Like, this isn't a show to explain that these guys are good at football. Mm -hmm. It's just about range of outcomes and what could happen. And so, um, you know, there was a little bit of the, is he happy in Philadelphia? We had, you know, we're going to have a new offensive coordinator. Which I love. Which could be okay. Could be good. Yeah, I mean, they... It was, uh, it was ironically very good for CeeDee Lamb when this coordinator departed. Well, it was pretty good for CeeDee Lamb when this coordinator was there as well. This coordinator being Kellen Moore, but... We'll what, not tell you his name. <laughs> what, what you saw this last year for the Eagles, after their Super Bowl trip, they lost their offensive coordinator, they lost their defensive coordinator. They tried to hire from within and just say, hey, you, we got to the Super Bowl, let's keep this mojo going, and they, they brought the next men up into roles that they had never done yet as their opportunity. And both those coordinators failed. I mean, they just did. They, they, it they were over their heads. And so those guys got fired, and they brought in, uh, they brought in Vic Fangio, right, and Kellen Moore. So they they're 
taking experience, known commodities, saying let's go. And I, I really like that. It gives me confidence in the Eagles' offense. Always interesting, though, when those known commodities have switched teams as much as they have. I always find that interesting because it's like – it's like a little Doc Rivers situation. You yeah, know? It, I think you've got to take everybody on an individual situation. Like Vic Fangio, has he, he he gets to do whatever he wants. I think he left to, to take this job. Kellen Moore was searching for a head coaching gig that he felt like he wasn't going to be able to get when he was in Dallas. And obviously the clearing of the house yeah. Oh, yeah. for Sorry. the Chargers. So no, it, you can make stories yeah. both directions. I mean, they're all facts. Uh, You know, yeah, sure. They're facts. I mean, he could have stayed. They're narratives. They could have, like, Jim Harbaugh could have been like, man, this guy's so good, I want to keep him. Like, that could have happened, right? No. Jim Harbaugh? Why not? Because he wants to Greg Roman run the ball. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Like, uh, the offense in Dallas got better. That's what I'm saying. It got better without him. Um, That's a fact. That is also a fact. Uh, So, let's move on. Top five. Justin Jefferson sitting at five. Because of you guys. Well, you have him at seven. I know. I'm just saying he's not in my top five. <laughs> Sometimes that's a, the, you know, this could go both directions. This could be dumb. He could be the bona fide number one easily. Yeah. And so, uh, you know. Uh, not easily. Not easily. Yeah, really easily. I mean, to be the number one wide receiver, you've got to have like double digit touchdowns, right? So, so last year, you, you've got an Achilles injury to your quarterback and you get 100 targets in 10 games. It's 170 target pace. You get 68 receptions for 1074 and five. I mean, th- th- this would have been uh, right at one ish spot last year with not a what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven missed weeks. Oh, it's, I, it, it's the yeah, everything is Kirk Cousins is gone in, in the games that we had. Uh, Nick Mullins, uh, essentially, the, the we had a four week stretch of him. So you know, it's the more a backup quarterback as uh, Sam Darnold is, at least at this point. Uh, but Nick Mullins was the QB in those four weeks. Two weeks were sensational. Uh, two weeks against Detroit, which was a team that we'd love to target for the the secondary and the options uh, and the opportunity for huge games. But against Cincinnati and Green Bay, he was the wide receiver 26, and then he was the wide receiver 38. So it's variability it, will be there without consistency, of course. Yes. That. So it, like, but total output could easily be number one overall. Like Jefferson, I just I don't see a with Sam Darnold, I don't see a world where where Jefferson is the number one guy, but he's just he's so good and so special that he's still at least in the top five. I, I think he's the most, number one wide receiver in the NFL. Most receiving yards in NFL history. Yeah, in a I'm, season with ten games played, I'm talking fewer. just fantasy, fan, yeah, fantasy yeah. for 2024. That it and it there's there's there is no one coming out of the smoke like just appearing. It's either Sam Darnold or it's a a rookie quarterback that they trade up to get. There's one quarterback that could come Trey Lance. out of the smoke. Say it's not Trey Lance. Trey Lance. It would not be Trey Lance. Okay. No, the he only said quarterback. The only way that Justin Jefferson, I think, finishes. 2024 as the wide receiver one because you have to have touchdowns there. He'll be great. He'll have 100 receptions. He'll have 1,300 plus to 1,700 yards. I, I just worry about the touchdowns. Um, would be Kyler Murray. Oh, what a tra- Kyler trade? No, no a Justin oh, Jefferson oh, trade. stop it. Yeah, what are baby? you doing? I'm just saying the Cardinals got the money. You go, you go, you what draft, you? you draft Marvin Harrison. Give me Justin Jefferson, baby. I'm what? just speaking it into existence, what? Mike. What There's been rumors. There's about? been. What are you <laughs> there have been rumors, but from uh, you? No, 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 no. I, I mean, I am certainly. Uh, propagating more rumor please trade Get Justin Jefferson to the Arizona Cardinals it's not happening no it's not happening got any more dreams <laughs> Joe Montana to Arizona Jerry Rice uh okay I mean look I I still believe Jefferson is is in the category of easily could be number one like there's only a handful of wideouts that could be number one overall Jefferson's still in that category for me uh we, we do Jason br- hates him I I, I love him hate, we do bring hate, up hate, hate. um we do bring up Larry Fitzgerald, obviously first ballot Hall of Famer at at for a long stretch, maybe the best wide receiver in the NFL. When he lost his quarterback in the prime of his career, he went from being a fantasy dominator to being a good NFL wide receiver who, for fantasy purposes, was mediocre. Now, Justin Jefferson's style of play in this modern NFL, I think he'll be better. I 
you know, I've still got him at wide receiver seven. He's great. I just worry about what the actual tip top ceiling is because I don't I don't see him having more than seven touchdowns. So many year. words for you could have just said I hate him. That would have summed it up. That would have been the cliff notes of the sentence that you were going to say, and then we would have been able to move on. I do hate Sam Darnold. You're right. Okay. Uh, quick break back with uh, a player that I think will be very hard for people to take over Justin Jefferson, but maybe not. All right, at number four, uh, Mike has him at number two, so we'll start there. Mike has, right. It won't be hard for Mike to take no, over it will Justin not. Jefferson. Amon Ross St. Brown, last year 119 receptions for 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. Uh, finished as the wide receiver three, 10 touchdowns. I don't I don't know if we'll see that again, but Mike thinks so. Amon Ra, clearly a dominator when he had the opportunity to be out there, and uh, the offense runs through him. He's a go-to third down wide receiver. What did you see last year that puts, so, that puts him at number two for you? Because that puts him ahead of who? Who's Everyone. your number one? Who's your number one? My number one is it CD is or is it Tyree? Tyree, Tyree Kill. So you've and got Amon Ra ahead of CD. I CD&A have him Lamb. at number two. I'm excited to, to talk about Amon Ra because I have I have him ranked at two. Not in, rankings are can be difficult because I don't necessarily think that Amon Ra will finish as the wide receiver two, but I think there is a strong chance that he is the second most important fantasy wide receiver. Even if he finishes at number five, because he is, he has true boom games like twelve for one twenty four with a touchdown like that. It's in the range of of outcomes for him. Finished the year f four straight weeks with a touchdown, one twelve with a score, one oh six with a score, ninety in a score, one forty four in a touchdown. I mean, he has that built into him, but what? is very rare for Amon Ra is to, to have a week where you go, where was he? What the heck happened to Amon Ra this yeah, week? A.J. Brown, second half. Jamar Chase. These games happen. Like, I mean, a, a ceiling game from Jamar Chase is, a, is much higher than a ceiling game from Amon Ra, but it's the consistency with ceiling games built in. I think that he just might be the second most important wide fantasy wide receiver. Consistency is a huge factor when you're drafting a wide receiver to be your number one and knowing what you're going to get. And he was an A by our consistency metric. 88% of his games, he exceeded 10 and a half points. Um, yeah, we got to add pluses. I mean, just for Amon Ra. Like, it feels insulting to be like, oh, an, that he's just an A? You're an A. It's just like, oh, all your games are pretty valuable. We should are add pluses. Pretty valuable. Why don't you get on that? All right. Like, looking at his, his game log, week two, Technically, he was the wide receiver 36. That's how he finished. But he was six receptions for 102 yards. That's that's not a game where I look at Amon Ra and I'm mad about no, it. No, that's double-digit fantasy He points. has one game. He had one game last year where it was three for 21 against Chicago, and that was an absolute disaster. Part of the secret, I think, and why CeeDee Lamb was so great and why Amon Ra is so great from a fantasy consistency standpoint is these guys get moved around and they play in the slot a ton. 55%. 55% for Amon Ross St. Brown. And I, I believe when we looked the other day, wasn't wasn't CeeDee Lamb in that same Something vicinity, like, that, yeah. like 60%? I so, think he was like 51. Okay, 51%. So, you know, you talk about scheming out a wide receiver. If Jamar Chase is on the outside and you bracket him and the team's decision-making can be, hey, I can do more letting Jamar Chase draw the defense mm -hmm. for a half. Or something to that uh, extent. So, I get it. Yeah, he, he it's hard. You can't argue against Amon Ra. He has no. improved each and every year. You had seventeen uh, points per game. So you it's like as a rookie, ninety for five, then one hundred six for six, then one nineteen and ten. Uh, maybe he doesn't get to ten touchdowns, but he will just he will be so solid and good for your team that there's. You can you can find a little bit of nitro the next round in the draft. Yeah, and he missed a game. He was on pace for 125 receptions. That's just a baseline that gives you guaranteed production every every game. The only guys that are anywhere near there are the other two. It's it's Tyree Kill and CeeDee Lamb last year. Well, uh, I was going to give you the top three here all at once, and then we can debate the differentiators. Jamar Chase comes in at three. 
Number two, C.D. Lamb, who was last year's number one overall. And number one, Tyreek Hill. And I think it depends on scoring system, obviously. I think Tyreek was number one in some scoring systems. But Chase, Lamb, Tyreek. The difficult year was Chase. He finished at 13 and had some games where he disappeared. And um, and just so the T. Higgins. Be looking at the first 10 weeks for Jamar because Burrow went out week 11. But it also took several weeks for Burrow to yeah, it, it did. get going. That's, yeah, that's the, the, fir that's the first month of the season, Burrow wasn't himself. He stunk. Because he had the calf injury in training yes, camp. Yes, he, he was coming in. So, I mean, those first two weeks you had – uh, Jamar Chase with 39 and 31 yards. You know Jamar Chase is great. You've seen him finish as a top five wide receiver in his rookie season. Now he's going to have fewer target competition. Uh, you know, it passes to go around. He, uh, not even saying they get rid of T. Higgins. Tyler Boyd is gone. And, you know, this is a, a team that is going to be, you know, licking their wounds and looking to bounce back from a really down season due to the injury to Burrow. So I love Jamar Chase. I don't have. Uh, he's my three. I couldn't imagine taking him over the other two guys. To me, that's a tear break. Like Tyreek and CD Lamb are, they're just unstoppable <laughs> fantasy forces right now. What's crazy is the boom games. He had five top 10 games. He never finished once between wide receiver 11 and 26. <laughs> so you disappear. I ain't no wide receiver too. No, he's like, I am either not here or I am winning you your week, that's kind of been the Jamar Chase experience at times where he could put up 254 and three easily. But, yeah, last year it was tough. Had some, you know, things go wrong for this team throughout the year. CeeDee Lamb, on the other hand, in the shadow of the dismissal of Kellen Moore, in the furious worries of Mike McCarthy being an old head that just wanted to run the ball, look, that didn't happen at all. Honestly, I, I we said it multiple times last year. I kind of like I like what Mike McCarthy was doing in Dallas, and 135 for 1749 and 12. And he's not. You can't scheme him out. I watched enough football last year where it was like, sometimes you just laugh. You're just like it's like Tyreek. You're just like I don't know why. Why is he always open? Why why can he throw it to him on any play he wants to? So, you know. This was this was a a massive season. This was Cooper Cup from twenty twenty one type of year. Yeah, he was unbelievable, and he should be on my dynasty roster if not for you two losers. He's I don't remember he's a, saying he's anything. a champ right I'm now, so, man. I'm he so is a bad champ. at you guys. If he were on your team right now, he would not be a champ. Oh yes, he would. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, he would, Mike. Anyway. That's the point. <laughs> That's the point. You played the long it's, con, getting me to trade Jalen Waddle for him. I turned the trade down. It's. A fair Whatever. point, and maybe you're right. I'll never live that down. You guys got to remind me. Anytime we get asked the question all the time, like, oh, you have any moves you regret or whatever, and I never <laughs> think of that until we're in the moment, but I regret you, that You forever. know the truth, though, right? Do you know the truth? Jalen Waddle would have been the wide receiver one last year <laughs> if I, you had made the yeah. trade. That's how fantasy yeah, works. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, so when you look at top 10 wide receiver fantasy seasons of all time Ooh, this in is points fun. per game, number one, Cooper Cup from 2021. Number two is sitting there. And so this is, uh, I guess this is organized by total fantasy points. Sorry. Cooper Cup was number one. Jerry Rice in 95 was number two. Randy Moss in 2007. We all remember that oh, yeah. if you're old. And then C.D. Lamb comes in at number four. And total fantasy points put up. So probably, probably and, and not going to repeat that. To be fair, Tyreek comes in at number six all time. He's right there. From last year? Yeah. Wow. That was um those were like league winning <laughs> seasons from yep. Whiteouts. Uh pretty impressive. So he he was uh he's a champion in League of Record. He's a champion in our Dynasty League. And uh He's probably a champ in your league too. Good just not in the NFL. Good chance. I know, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Don't just... care. So number one is Tyreek. He's thirty years old. So maybe you don't care. Okay. He is uh, playing with the least talented quarterback of the three. Big, the, the big three. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's fine by me. He will probably be great and win you a lot of weeks again. Yeah. I mean, he he's, he's unstoppable and he used to be a 
giant, big play, low volume guy. And we just talked about, you know, he, he had the same exact reception number that Amon Ra had. And you just don't think about him like that. You think about like Amon Ra is the slot guy, this possession receiver that's like PPR machine. That's not Tyreek. Tyreek's like way down on the other end of the field. Yeah, but he's getting the same amount of targets and or at least receptions. It's just he's he's it's not, the number one pick or not, the number two in after Christian McCaffrey. It's not apples to apples, but it is a counterpoint to the leaving your great quarterbacks going to cost you. Tyreek Hill, great player, mm -hmm. goes to a situation nobody expected him to be better, mm -hmm. and he's better. So Sam Darnold would I, not be better. Sam Darnold is. Not better, no. But two is not better than Mahomes. No, of course not. So, so there is a world where like target and talent, targets and talent, uh, you know, makes a pretty significant difference. So I uh, just throwing it out there. You know, you want to bring up Larry Fitz? I'm gonna bring up Tyreek Moving. That's all. Sure. I would, yeah. You know, I would say Mike McDaniel because the scheme is so important. Yeah. Like he. McDaniel, they knew what they were doing when they could get him in a trade, and they traded everything to get him, and then gave him the cash. Yeah, it's fun to watch Mike McDaniel talk about that. Like the when he found out that there was a chance he could get this guy, and just knowing oh, I haven't seen that clip what that represents for the team, and like how they'll do anything to like I can put that guy on my team. So yeah, uh, there you go. There's your there's your top ten countdown. I'll I'll run it back, Debo. At 10, London at 9, Wilson at 8, Puka at 7, Brown at 6, Jefferson at 5, Amonra at 4, Chase at 3, Lamb at 2, Tyreek at 1. We did it. Next week, uh, what are we talking about, Al? What's next week's agenda? I think we got running backs, the countdown is for furiously Tuesday searching. and Thursday. That is correct. <laughs> uh, you know, I try to try to... Um, Early running back rankings, yeah. So we'll have the two-parter next week and looking forward to it. I think that's it. I think we're done. We are. All right. Thanks for joining us. A reminder, head over to ultimatedraftkit.com. Get access to the Dynasty Pass right now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.